Hello, my name is Dave Turner and I'm one of the Critical Care Outreach Nurses and for the next 15 minutes or so I'll be talking to you about early warning scores and in particular the implementation of the new National Early Warning Score, News 2. So what is an early warning score and why do we use them? An early warning score is used to track patients' vital signs and trigger an appropriate response according to the attached escalation guidelines. Early warning scores are not a new concept, they've been around for many years. However, inpatient deterioration is still going undetected. In 2012, NCPOD looked at patient observations leading up to inpatient cardiac arrests and found that over 60% of inpatient cardiac arrests could have been predicted. And from this, over one third of those cardiac arrests could have been avoided had their deterioration been identified earlier and the appropriate treatment commenced. So how can we improve the early detection of the deteriorating patient and prevent so many avoidable deaths by keeping the chain of prevention intact? So education. Well, you're all here receiving the annual update, so that's a good start. The remaining four chains can be kept intact by using the early warning score appropriately. So monitoring, well, this is the regular taking and recording of patient vital signs. Recognition, calculate the aggregated early warning score and consider patient past medical history and apply your clinical judgment. Call for help. Don't panic alone, panic in company. Use the accompanying escalation guideline to highlight who you might like to call. Make sure you use a structured communication tool when calling for help, as this will help the person on the receiving end obtain all the relevant information. At SASH, we use SBAR. Situation, background, assessment and recommendations. So hopefully by now you should have someone come in to help you. The responder may have made some suggestions of things to be getting on with. Please do not leave your patient and start to treat their deterioration to the best of your competence. For example, apply some oxygen if desaturating, obtain IV access and take bloods if trained to do so, or even obtain an equipment so that these tasks can be completed by a competent person as soon as possible. Historically, there have been many variations of early warning scores and track and trigger systems, both nationally and worldwide, with varying levels of sensitivity and specificity. In 2012, the Royal College of Physicians identified that having so many different early warning score systems nationally was causing confusion, especially with temporary or rotating staff. Therefore, they developed a national early warning score so that everyone throughout the NHS would be talking a common language with regards to patient deterioration. However, six years on, still over 20% of trusts have not adopted the National Early Warning Score. So in 2017, the Royal College of Physicians revised the National Early Warning Score and developed News 2, which has since been endorsed by NHS England and has been mandated to be in all acute NHS trusts in England by March 2019. SASH has chosen to present the News 2 in a booklet style that has been rolled out to all adult wards across East Surrey Hospital excluding maternity on the 10th of September 2018. One of the biggest changes in News 2 is that there are two SAT scales. SAT scale 1 for patients with normal respiratory function and SAT scale 2 specifically catering for those patients with chronic respiratory disease such as COPD, whose normal saturation levels would be between 88 to 92 percent. It is important to note that nursing staff are not expected to make the decision to which scale your patient should be on. Please, as a gold standard, encourage the medical staff to prescribe the oxygen therapy highlighting the target saturation level on the patient's medication card. In addition to this, please ask them to identify which scale on front page of the News 2 document, making sure they add their signature, grade and bleep number for extra clarity. 
it's really important to clearly identify which scale on the front of this document so that anyone taking a set of observations knows which scale to score the patient on. On the back page of the News 2 booklet, you will find the accompanying escalation guide. This guide is very similar to the escalation guide that accompanied the original news. However, you will note that any news of five or more should prompt us to think, could this be sepsis? Sepsis kills 44,000 people every year in the UK and is the single largest cause of avoidable death in Europe. Now that the appropriate SAT scale has been identified, please score through the scale not in use, so that that section does not get filled out and cause unnecessary confusion. As you can see here, SAT scale 2 allows the patient to have SATs between 88 to 92% without allocating a score. The patient can have SATs greater than 93% as long as this is on room air. If the patient's SATs are 93% and they are be given oxygen, then they will start to score, as oxygen can be potentially dangerous in this patient group. This should encourage the caregiver to turn off or down the oxygen to achieve target saturations of 88 to 92 percent. In regards to oxygen therapy, the way we score inspired oxygen has also changed. On the old National Early Warning Score, you did not score until you administered more than 2 litres of oxygen and then you would score varying scores depending on how much oxygen you are administering. With News 2, you don't score if the patient is on room air, otherwise you score 2 for all inspired oxygen regardless of how much. With regards to blood pressure, you will notice that you no longer score for hypertension. Unless your systolic blood pressure is greater than 220 millimeters of mercury. I know this makes some people feel a little uneasy. The reason for this is that an aggregated early warning score such as News 2 is designed to use the aggregated score to identify deteriorating patients. When patients deteriorate they are far more likely to be hypotensive than hypertensive. This does not mean that hypertension should not be investigated and treated, please consider possible causes such as pain, agitation, or maybe they have been nil by mouth for several days and have not been taking their usual antihypertensive medicines. With regards to assessing patients' conscious level, acute confusion has been added to the AVPU scale. Acute onset of confusion can be caused by poor perfusion or septic mediators and can be a clear sign of patient deterioration. This may be one of the most challenging things to assess, especially if you are meeting the patient for the first time. We suggest that you ask the patient's family or friends to help you ascertain the patient's normal baseline so that we are able to accurately assess new onset of confusion. If you assess your patient to have new onset of confusion, this will score 3 in this section. If your patient has a news of 5 or more, please complete the sepsis pathway. If you identify 2 or more surge criteria and have a suspected source of infection, then your patient is septic. Please inform the responsible doctors in hours or the on-call team out of hours. Now please complete sepsis 6 within the hour. Take blood cultures. This will help to isolate the causing pathogen and identify the most appropriate antibiotics to use. Monitor urine output, catheterize where possible and aim for half a mil per kilo per hour. Give fluid boluses to maintain systolic blood pressure greater than 90 millimeters of mercury. Get the appropriate antibiotics prescribed for the suspected source. These should be reviewed within three days, by which time we should have the results from the blood culture, which may prompt either stopping or changing antibiotic therapy. Please give the prescribed antibiotic as soon as possible, and then at regular intervals as prescribed. Obtain either an arterial or venous blood gas to check for lactate level. Lactate is a byproduct of anaerobic metabolism and therefore is an indicator of organ disruption and poor end organ perfusion. Give high flow oxygen via a non-rebreathe mask. 
and then titrate oxygen therapy to obtain target saturations for the individual patient. If you complete the sepsis 6 within the hour, you will be well on the way to preventing one of the 44,000 avoidable deaths each year. Thank you. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact a member of the Critical Care Outreach Team on extension 6389 or bleep 766 or 767. Thank you for listening.